What's up everybody, it's David from WebsiteCreatePro.com and in this tutorial video, I'm gonna walk you through step one to step done on how to create a professional website and blog using Wix. Wix is one of the most popular website builders in the world and they provide an intuitive page building experience. I would describe them as sort of like an unstructured page builder where you get different sections that you can add into your page and then you can adjust and edit the elements within that section with ease. This tutorial video is perfect for anybody who's been looking for a crash course in how Wix work so you can really understand the fundamentals so you can go forward and create an impressive looking website and blog. As this is a step one to step done tutorial video, I'm going to walk you through all the steps that you need to know. We're going to be getting a custom domain name. I'll show you how to design your website and optimize your blog post for SEO. Like always, make sure to check the links in the description for timestamps and resources mentioned in the video. So let's begin. I'm going to walk you through step one to step done on how to create this beautiful, impressive looking website using Wix. I'm gonna show you how to add in a beautiful hero image, how to add in a nice call to action, a button, a subtitle, logo, menu, how to optimize everything for a mobile device so it looks great no matter what device people visit your website on. I'm also going to show you how to add in specific sections of your website, like how to add in a nice image right here, a quick little bio, add in a visual menu, multimedia, like videos, images, like from Instagram, the latest blog posts, as well as an option for people to subscribe and sign up to your email list. You can engage in email marketing, as well as how to set up a custom domain name that is secure. So let's get started. Welcome to my laptop, let's begin. So when you click the link in the description, you're going to be looking at a page that looks like this with this gorgeous uh, image right here of this pyramid and it follows down with this waterfall. It's really beautiful and impressive. Uh, to get started it is obviously very simple. You just have to click the big blue button that says start now. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now you're going to be presented with a standard login screen. So you have to create an account here or you can continue with Facebook or Apple or whatever you want to do. I definitely recommend uh, creating a dedicated account using an email. So let me go ahead and log in. All right, so once you log in, you're going to be looking at a screen like this. This is Wix's onboarding process. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and click on skip because we don't need to do this. So let me go ahead and click this. OK, so now we can choose how we want to create our website. So over here you have Wix ADI, which is the artificial design intelligence. Functionally speaking, this is just a bunch of questions that picks your template and your pages, et cetera, like what you want to add, or you can create your website with the editor. We're going to be doing this way so you can really learn and understand Wix because then you can just do whatever you want. Like once you understand how to design a website using the Wix editor, you can do whatever you want. You don't need to rely on the ADI. You don't need to rely on templates. You can just do whatever you want. So anyways, we're going to go here, click on it, choose a template. Okay, so now you can pick the template you love. So Wix is really helpful because they have everything organized logically. Uh, so you can find something that you're specifically looking for depending on like what kind of like website you want to make. Okay, so we have business and services, we have store, creative, community, blog. Okay, and then we have different types of blogs like personal, food, etc. Okay, and so you can just sort by, you know, this and scroll and, and you know, just find whatever you want. <laughs> it's pretty simple. Now we have over here, we can search templates. So for example, if I want to do this and say, uh, I want to start like a tech blog, we'll put in tech and then boom, we have stuff that pops up here. Like, okay, tech forum, home tech store, tech company. It's really helpful. Now we're not going to be using a template. I'm going to show you actually how to build a website with Wix from scratch. So we're going to actually go to blank templates and we're going to start from scratch. So let's go ahead and click on edit. Okay, so now our website has loaded and it's just a blank screen. So let's get to work designing our website. Designing our website with Wix. So let's get started. So if you mouse around, you're gonna notice that it says page right there. Up top there is your header and then down there is your footer. So it breaks up the page into the three logical positions. So you have your content there, your header, which is where your menu and your logo is gonna go. Then the footer is where your legally stuff, disclaimers, that sort of stuff goes. So let's get started designing the page. So first thing I wanna do is I wanna add like a beautiful background image. So, you know, for example, let's open up like websitecrivepro.com and let's just take a quick look 
And so if we notice like, okay, we have this big image right here. How do I do that with Wix? It's really simple. So you just navigate to where it says background. And now you can come down here and you can select any background that you want, or you can upload your own specific image, okay? And so what I, what do I suggest doing is add your own image. It's your website, don't use the stock images. I mean, you can if you want, it's up to you. Uh, you also can upload a video if you want, but I'm not a big fan of having a video play in the background where the call to action is like this. I don't like doing that personally. Anyways, let me go ahead and click on image. Okay, so now we can upload our own media. So let me just go and do that. So I'm going to be creating a travel blog about Haizang, Vietnam, where I took a motorcycle trip. It was really beautiful and incredible. So let me just drag this image right here. This is my own image. Uh, I definitely, let me open up this actually, just show it to you really quick. Uh, so I definitely recommend using your own image and then make sure that the image is not too big. Like this is a 1,500 by 1,000 pixel image. You want a big image, but you don't want it to be too big where it makes your website load slowly. Okay, so you gotta balance it out. Anyways, now we have the image uploaded successfully. Okay, and it looks good. And so over here we have additional actions where we can like crop and edit, adjust, like cut out the, but we can do stuff with it really nice. We can add tags down there we can add uh, file info as well uh, you know you know it's just helpful stuff over here but all we need to do at this point is just change the background <laughs> okay boom there we go okay so now we got a big image in the background so let me go ahead and click out X let me click on preview okay and so now this is what our website is looking like it looks good okay so we're missing a lot of stuff so let's make a call to action right there let me go back to the editor. Okay, so now what do I wanna do? I wanna add text. I wanna add text like this, and like, how do you do that with Wix? It's really simple. So you go to plus, add, okay? Right here is where you have all your information uh, that you can add to your site. So you have like your text, image, buttons, etc. We're gonna get into all of this stuff, but right now we just need to go to text. Really that simple. Now we wanna add a heading. So now you see heading one, two, three, four, five, six. What does that mean? Look, your heading one is your page title, okay? And so you should have one H1 tag. So let me just go ahead and open up a blog post so you guys don't get confused as to like what I'm talking about. Let me open up this blog post right here. This is the H1 uh, on a page, okay? There should, it's the title of the page, that's it. Now you have subheadings like this. This is a subheading. This is an H2 tag, okay? Then anything underneath this, for example, like this right here, this is an H3. This is a subheading of this, okay? And so you don't just arbitrarily just, oh, I like the way H2 looks. Like, no, <laughs> wrong. You know, you pick, pick H1 for your uh, title tag. Okay, so I'm going to be calling this site, uh, I'm gonna have the call to action be Ha Zhang. So let's type that in, Ha, uh, Ha Zhang. It's actually pronounced. It's pronounced Ha Zhang. It's spelled Ha Giang, but it's correct. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to maybe change the highlight. Let's make this white. There we go. All right. Hold on a second. Let me click on that. Ah, there we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. So that looks good. It's a little small, so let me go ahead and click on the edit text. I like the Proxima Nova. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Maybe not too big like that. Uh, we'll do 100 and that looks good. Okay, so let me just kind of move this over here. Let me just make this, make that a little bit more space. Okay, I think I actually want that to be a little bit bigger, actually. We're gonna do 100, oh, that's too big. Um, okay, that looks good. So I'll leave it like that. I think that looks cool and interesting. So that's my H1. Okay, so let's continue. It's like maybe we can add a tagline to it. How do we add text? All right, I just showed you. Again, navigate back to the plus sign. Click on plus, then go to text. Now I'm I want to add in text. So I can either add in a heading two, or I can just go to a paragraph and do that way if I want. So anyways, I'm going to go to uh, titles. Okay, well, no, I'm going to go to theme text. There we go. I'll go to H2. There we go. And I'll move this right here and put it right there. I think that looks cool. And I'll just say something like uh, beautiful Vietnam. You know, I'll leave it like that. Beautiful Vietnam. 
Maybe I'll highlight the text and then I don't want it to be black. I want it to be white. So we come down here where it says the color. I can change that. And there we go. Let's click out that. And that looks nice. Okay. I think that looks good. Like we'll leave it like that. I think that looks cool and interesting. Let's go ahead and click on preview. And yeah, I really like that. Okay. So the image moves a little bit. Looks good. So let me go ahead and go back to the editor. All right, so with a call to action, again, you always want to like direct people somewhere to do something, whether it's subscribe to your website, read one of your best pieces of content, whatever. So again, let me go ahead and add a button. So how do you do that with Wix? <laughs> you should already know. We navigate to the plus. Okay, the plus sign is your best friend with Wix because this is where you're going to find all the stuff. I want to add in a button. There we go. I love this about Wix because it comes with built in buttons like this that look fantastic that kind of match any type of like website. You can kind of jump, jump in and customize the colors of each of these buttons as you want. But oftentimes they just look good right out of the box. So I'll click on this one, click me and that looks good. So I'll put that right there and see how that has that line there. It tells me it's kind of centered. OK, so I click on this and now we can change text and icon. OK. So right here, I can change the text to something like that. I want to like learn more, okay? Then you can add a link right here. So if I click on add a link right there, okay, we can have a web address or you can select a page that's already created on your website. So like a web address is really helpful because you can just make it uh, into any like link that you want, okay? So for example, if I just want to link to YouTube, we'll just say that, okay? Uh, I'll say like youtube.com, whatever. Now, if it's a link that's off your website, you want to open it in a new window. If it's a link that's on your website, open it in the current window. If that makes sense. Anyways, there we go. I'll click on done and X out of that. And there we go. OK, and so let me go ahead and click on preview. And yeah, that's looking really nice. How quick and easy was that? So we have Hazong, beautiful Vietnam, learn more link to like whatever you want. If you want to create some type of specific guide or page or wherever you want. OK, and so that's how you set up the uh, hero image and the call to action on your website. All right, so let's continue designing our website. So in general, what I recommend for the home page is to make it into sort of like a visual menu. So you should introduce the different sections of your website, maybe a call to action to subscribe to an email list, get the free guide. You know, whatever it is you do, that's sort of like how you want to structure it. And so right now I kind of want to add in a nice little welcome message to the website, sort of like I've done here with WebsiteCreatorPro.com right underneath here. Let me click out that. So right underneath here. So what's really cool about Wix is that it comes with a lot of built in sections that you can just add to your site and adjust really easily. So the function that we're going to be using is the strip function. And this looks so good because you can just add it. Boom. Done. Look how easy that was like this took so long to design. <laughs> and I love that like, oh, I click a button and there you go. OK, so now it's successfully added. OK, now with Wix, you have a lot of more flexibility with the dif different things as well. So if we go to preview, OK, look at how it looks. It's like, eh, I want to push this down. It's like, yeah, I don't want it to appear right there. I want to give this a little bit more padding and breathing room, etc. And with Wix, it's very easy. So we just click up top there. OK, and oh, we click on this. OK, there we go. All right. So now there we go. OK, so now I can drag this down. OK, and so we'll just leave it down there. Give this a lot of space. It's really that simple. OK, so now we have these two sections right there. we got the image over here and we have your add your title in. So obviously, you again, you just want to make sure that this is let's go to edit text. Let's make sure that's an H2 tag. There it is. It looks good. And then you can adjust the text and edit as you want. OK, it's really that simple. Uh, so let me just click on the section there. OK, so I don't want to click on the text. If we click on the text, you're editing the text. I don't want to edit the text. I want to edit the whole column section right there. So if I go to like manage columns, for example, let's take a look. There we go. OK, so I can change the way the columns look. Now, if I change strip of background right there. There we go. There we go. OK, so I clicked on change column background right over here. We have the column background settings. Click on settings and now we can change the color to something else like gray or white or whatever we want. So maybe I'll make it a, a white color. I think that looks a lot better. OK, and we'll click on back. There we go. And it's really that simple. OK, 
Now, another nice thing here is we have background scroll effects, okay? And so we have fade in, fade out, whatever we want. So we can have this fade in, we'll click off X like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and preview this to see how it looks. So people scroll down and then this kind of fades in. I think that looks really nice. Now, this is not me. <laughs> so let's go ahead and change the picture right here. So again, this is a large image, so I suggest that you have your own specific large image. So again, just click on the strip, okay? And now what do you wanna do? What do you wanna do? You wanna manage column? No, what you wanna do is you wanna change the strip background. So change column background, click there. Okay, so now the image has popped up. What do you have to do next? Obviously, click on settings, okay? And so settings is like where you can kind of jump in here and change things as needed. So let's go back here. Okay, now let me go ahead and click on image, okay? Now for the image, I can upload my own specific image. And so upload media right there. And okay, so let's minimize it. And then I'll take this picture I have of myself in Hazang and let it upload. Okay, so now we got this image right there. So I'm gonna maybe go to crop and edit. All right, so maybe this is a little bit too much on the top right there. Let's make it a little bit smaller so it kind of fits a little bit better. I think that looks a lot nicer. Let me go ahead and click on save. Okay, so now I can go here and crop, edit, and adjust. Let me go to adjust, for example. And now here you can change like the way the image looks, the brightness if you want, etc. So I'll click on cancel. Yeah, I wanna leave. Okay, and so let's go to crop and edit again. Okay, and so over top there, you can kind of change and have it be warpy a little bit if you want, like have a little bit more design to it. You know, I don't know if you wanna go insane like that. <laughs> okay, you know, you can just play around with it and make it look however you want. So I think I'll leave it like this like negative two i'll click on save you know just play around with it have fun it's your website get just get into designing how you want okay so let's go ahead and click on change background and there we go okay so that looks really nice so let's again go back to settings and so here you can kind of change the way the image is positioned on your website okay so for example if i click up top there in this corner Let's just wait for it. It's a little, okay. So I was like, ah, that's cutting off my feet, but it's giving a nicer view. Actually, I think right down there, yeah, that looks best, okay? Okay, so let's X out of that. And let's go ahead and take a look at preview. Okay, so we have Hazang, we've got some space right there. People scroll down. Now we have this nice image of your man out in the middle of nowhere <laughs> in Hazang on a motorcycle. And there you go. So let's go back to the editor. All right, so let's go here, and again, let's click on it, make sure you have the image selected, and then here you can add background scroll effects. And here it's really nice, because you can just play around with this and, and have things change as you want. So you want know, fade in, zoom out, zoom in, you know, rotate, pan right. So it's like, uh, actually I'm gonna have things, I'll have things zoom in. Let's see how that looks. Let me go ahead and go to preview. Okay, so people scroll down, and then the image kind of moves a little bit. Oh, yeah, that looks great, okay? So I really like that. And so there you go. So you can just play around with different animation effects to add a little bit more to your website. And anyways, that's how you add a nice welcome message to your website with Wix. Let's go ahead and add a visual menu to our website. So the way the page is laid out now is we have this beautiful image up top there, then we have this image there, and it, that's enough. Like we have enough images. Now we need to really like add some type of either solid color, menu, whatever. You need to break up the page a little bit. If like we have another image or we just have this background image appearing, it's too uh, unprofessional, overwhelming looking. So it's really important to just break up the design a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is add in just a visual menu, like, hey, click here to my social media links or these specific blog posts or whatever it is you wanna do. Now what's great about Wix is it's so simple. You click the plus sign again, like I told you, the plus sign is your best friend with Wix. So now we wanna go up to strip right here. And now you wanna come down here and you have a bunch of different things. You have your welcome message that you can adjust, services, team. So I'm actually gonna to go to services and right down here, we can just add in any type of like service box we want, and then we can adjust it as we see fit. So, you know, again, like these are images. Now, nope, we're not adding in more images because it's overwhelming. It's better to come down there. We'll add in this one right here. And there you go. Click it. <laughs> there you go. Automatically added. And I think that looks really nice. Kind of breaks up the site just a little bit. And even the colors by default <laughs> look really nice with the overall design and layout of the site. 
and that's it, okay? And so it's really that simple. So you can click each of these, you can go to edit text, then just change the font to whatever you want. You can change the heading. Personally, I probably would make this like an H3 right there. Up to you, not a big deal, because like we have H1 there, then this is an H2, and then these, that would make more sense for these to be H3. Completely up to you. And then right down there, we have the read more. So we click on this, change text. Okay, and so like for example, we can add this and make this a link to something. So for example, if I wanna make this instead of branding, I could say YouTube, Twitter, like Facebook, whatever, or uh, like resources, learn how to go to Haizang, learn essential things that you need to, to take with you for this trip. Learn how to like learn the best route to go on, like whatever, you could make it something like that. Again, it's like a visual menu. Now, you maybe if you don't like four things, if that's okay, you can come over here and you can just go to right click, and then you can go to delete. <laughs> okay, it's literally that simple whenever you want to delete an element. And so there you go. So now we have those three boxes right there. And I think that looks nice. I think it looks nice to, uh, you know, break up the website. So in general, that's how you add a visual menu to your website with Wix how to add multimedia to your website. So I'm gonna show you quickly how to add in a photo gallery and how to add in, say, like a YouTube video for your homepage. So we're gonna add, um, the next thing I wanna add in is a nice looking YouTube video. And so to get started, again, plus sign is your best friend. And so we come over here. Now all what you have to do is kind of common sense. You have to look for something that says like video. There we go, boom. So here we can upload video, upload, YouTube, Vimeo, Facebook, Dailymotion. So what does that mean? You can embed on your Wix website videos that you've posted to Facebook or Vimeo, or you can upload your own video depending on the plan that you have with Wix. Uh, it depends on how much storage space you get for specific videos, which is really nice. You're like, why would I ever want that? Well, if you're making like a sales page, you don't want to have your video, say, on YouTube, okay? You want to have it on like Vimeo, for example, and or just Wix, uh, Wix's editor. Anyways, we're going to be uploading a YouTube video. So I'm going to click here, YouTube. All right, that looks terrible. <laughs> so again, drag and drop, just move it into place, okay? It's really that simple, okay? There's no, there's no magic. It's like, well, it is kind of magic, but like, there you go. Now, maybe we can make this a little bit bigger, okay? So you have two options with this. You can either make it bigger or you can add, make it smaller and then add like a text element over there if you wanna add in a, like a little paragraph. Personally, I'm just gonna have a big image, okay? I'm just gonna have a big video right here for people to watch and enjoy. And let me move it up top there. Okay, now this is just some like default video. So we have to go here to change video. Now, what's the video's web address? Well, I'm gonna go to my personal vlog uh, and I'm gonna open up this and let me take the copy link address because it's the, my Hazong vlog that I made. Okay, so what's the web address? Let's back out of this and then boom, paste our video in and there you go. Okay, so let me click on X out of this. Okay, oh wait, actually, sorry. Let me just continue on. Let me click here again. Sorry, let's go to change video. Okay, let's just, cover like you have we have playback options autoplay plays in the loop keep autoplay off guys like everybody gets annoyed when they open up a website and a video starts playing that's the most obnoxious thing just leave it off you can also add in a video description but personally i would just leave it as is okay so anyways i think this looks nice let me just actually widen this so the the video fits a little bit more appropriately we can kind of there we go there we go perfect all right now you're like well that looks good, but like what, how do I change the background? Like what do I, okay. So with Wix, it works a little bit differently. Again, <laughs> plus signs your friend, go to strip. Now you wanna navigate down here where it says classic. Okay, classic, you have black and white. These are kind of like your default color backgrounds that you can just adjust color to like whatever you want. So I'm just gonna click on white because I want it to be white. Now I'm gonna move this up top there, okay? And just move it up, okay? And now you're like, okay, that's great, but now it's covering the video. Well, okay, you have to come here, click it, right click, now overlapping items, okay? And so arrange. So I want to move this backwards, okay? So the video's on top. Now this is the white section, so extend it down, okay? So it covers the whole video. And there you go, okay? So that's kind of like how you change the background. And now I have this strip there. If I want to click on the strip, I can change the strip background to black, pink, whatever I want, okay? It's really that simple. And that's kind of like how you adjust the background. So let's go ahead and click on preview. All right, so we have Hazong right there. 
All right, we got that, the visual menu. Okay, we got the video plane, looks good. Now the next thing I wanna do is add in a photo gallery underneath uh, the video. Let's add in a photo gallery to our website. So for pictures, you have two options primarily. You can either add in your own gallery or you can connect to Instagram. Now to add in a gallery again, we just go to the plus and then you just find where it says gallery. Then you can automatically just click and upload any of these galleries as you want. A lot of them are really pretty and have a really nice design and style like this one with the diamond shapes and the triangles. Now, of course, you're gonna have to like upload it and then adjust each image individually. It's pretty self-explanatory. You just click on the image and change it to your own image, okay? And then delete images that you don't wanna have. Now, I kinda wanna just uh, add an Instagram. So how do I do that? Well, like, oh, I don't see Instagram. I don't know where to go. One thing I wanna just mention too is that you can always use the search function. So click on the search function. This will pop up top there. And then you can just type in whatever you're looking for. So for example, I typed in Instagram then apps for your site, Instagram feed, okay? So let me go to open right there. Okay, and so we can add it and it's completely free. And so we can just go to add again and there you go. Okay, and so, okay, so now we have Instagram added to our site. So obviously this is not my feed, but to add in your own feed, you have to go to settings, okay? And then once in settings, you have to go here to connect Instagram right there. And then it should load and allow you to connect. So I'm not going to do this because I don't want to connect Wix to my Instagram, but just showing you uh, if you wanted to do it yourself. So I'm going to leave it like that. I think that looks cool. I think six images looks great. So let's just move this down. Okay, move it down right there. And so again, like I don't want the image in the background. So again, just same process. We got to click the white and then drag it down, drag it down, give it enough space to, so the images fit. All right, so I think that that should be enough. Let's go here, let's move this back up, see how that fits. And I think that looks, we'll center it right there. And okay, so that looks good. Now, I'd really like to have a call to action for people to like, hey, follow me on Instagram. So how do you do that? Again, go to the ad, okay? Then all you wanna do is add text, right? That's it. So we'll go to H2, okay? And I'll move that up top there and just change it, okay? So it's like, follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram, at, and then your handle, edge of uh, David, there we go. Okay, so I'll extend that out so it fits properly. There we go, all right, good. Okay, so I can take that. Proxima Nova looks good. Maybe we can just bold that so it stands out a little bit more. Uh, and that's it, okay, so we'll put that right there so it's centered. And I think that looks nice. So again, you can adjust this as you want. So if like you want, uh, you know, you you don't want you want to change the layout of this, you can change it. Okay. So for example, like if I wanted to have it like follow me on an Instagram in big letters right there, the edge of David, I could do that. So like again, you could just play around with this. So like follow me on, I'll leave it there, and we'll minimize this. Okay. Again, guys, you gotta just get creative and, and you know, you get creative and use your creativity. So I'll click on this again, and then I'll add in another heading, and then I'll call this like maybe uh, Instagram. Okay, and I'll move that there. There we go. Whoop. All right. So let me actually adjust that, and there we go. So I can have it right there. And then edit text. We can make this text a little bit bigger, so it's like that, and then bold it. That looks good. All right, so let me click on X like that. All right, so center that right there. Follow me on Instagram. And then text again, H2. And then change it to like at edge of David. There we go. And I can make that like really big if I want. Oh, I got to highlight it. There we go. Okay, now I can make that big. <laughs> okay, maybe a little too big. Uh, there we go. Extend that out. Follow me on Instagram. Okay, so that's, that's actually too big. So we'll highlight that. I'll make this down to, we'll say a nice 80 size, okay? And there we go. So follow me on Instagram, Edge of David, boom. Okay, so we'll take the images, move them back up top there, kind of just make sure everything kind of fits. Uh, click the white thing again, stretch it down, okay? Move it up, and there we go. Okay, so now we have the images kind of fitting in properly. Looks good. Uh, maybe a little bit more breathing room between these elements, like move that down a little bit, maybe move this down, move this down a little bit, 
Okay, put that right there, put that right there. Kind of give everything some space, some breathing room. Okay, so let's go ahead and preview. And that looks good. So as people scroll down, there's the video. Follow me on Instagram. Boom, then we have our Instagram feed. Okay, I gotta extend this down a little bit more. Not a big deal. But anyways, that's how you add a photo gallery or your Instagram to your website. Now I want to add in a blog post section on the homepage so people can kind of just come to the homepage and navigate to the latest and greatest blog posts uh, very easily. Now if we come over here to page, we click this drop down, we only have a home page. So we're going to have to create a blog post page as well as blog posts. Don't worry with Wix, it just gives you demo content automatically just to get you set up. And I really like it, it just makes it just simple. So anyways, let's go to the plus sign over there. And now what do we want to add? We want to add a blog to our website, okay? So we have a blog right there and we can come here and add it to site. So let's click on that. Okay, so now it's giving us choose the type of blog that's right for you. We have the Wix blog, Wix blog plus members area. So what Wix does is that it can lock content behind a paywall if you want to go that route. Uh, so it's totally up to you. So like you, it's sort of like a Patreon type setup where you can have specific blog posts hidden. Uh, really creative way to earn money from your website. Something that comes to mind that does that is actually Mark Mason at markmason.net, I believe. He has like public posts and then some posts are locked. That's what this is, but we're just gonna use the standard Wix blog. Let's go ahead and click on next. Okay, so now it's successfully added a blog post page. Okay, so let's click X out of this. So before we get lost, you're like, whoa, what happened to the site? Okay, pay attention. <laughs> it says page blog, okay? Now you're on the dedicated blog post page, okay? And so all we have to do is click the drop down. We don't wanna be here. We wanna go back to where our home page is, okay? If we come down there, okay, now we want to add in our blog post. So let's go ahead and click on pl uh, the plus sign, go to the blog. All right, so now how, what type of blog post style do we want to add? So it's like, it's up to you. It's your website, totally up to you. I like this. I'm going to click on this one right there. Okay, so now we have our blog post added to the site. Let's again adjust everything as appropriate. So we want to give things just a little bit of space. All right, so again, I gotta click on the white image right there and let's just extend this down a little bit more. Let's keep extending that. All right, okay, so now I wanna move this up top there. Let's move this up again right there. Okay, okay, there we go. All right, so where are our blog posts? All right, let's move our blog posts up right there. Okay, and that looks good. And I'll leave it right there. Okay, so we got a little bit of an overlap, not a big deal. All right, so we can manage posts and settings. So if we go to settings, settings dictate how everything looks and is displayed. So if we go to settings right there, all posts, all tags, by fixed number, number of posts to show. You, know, you can change this to whatever you want. Definitely, I would only want, I only want three posts to show. So like, even if I have like 20 blog posts, I don't want 20 blog posts or 10 blog posts displayed on the homepage. I want my latest three or four displayed max. Now, if we come over here to display, this is where you can kind of get rid of the uh, all this meta description stuff. So, for example, like publish date, nobody cares about that. Reading time, who cares? Description, eh, maybe. View counter, no. Comment counter, no. Likes counter, no. <laughs> okay, so it's like, okay, so that looks better. <laughs> so I like that. Okay, so layout, here is where you can kind of change the layout to have it be something that classic or magazine. I personally like the way that this is laid out. Looks nice, very readable. All right, I'll click off X of that. Okay, so just like I did here with the title, definitely you wanna give this its own little title section. So again, plus sign, again, text, again, H2, and then uh, just call it like the blog, okay? Something simple, the blog, okay? We'll just see, keep it super duper simple like that, H2, that looks good. Let me highlight this, let me go ahead and bold that, boom. Awesome, let's center this. All right, actually, let me just bring that in a little bit. And yeah, there we go. Okay, so maybe it's a little small. Let's, let's increase the font size just a little bit. All right, we'll do 70. I think that looks nice. All right, let me extend it out this way. And there we go. Okay, let me just go ahead and center this. All right, there we go. Okay, and that looks good. Okay, so now we've successfully added our latest blog post to our homepage. 
All right, so the last thing I want to add to my website is a call to action to subscribe to some type of like email list at the footer of the website. I'm telling you, the best spots for any type of call to action like that is up top there and right at the bottom of the website, right above the footer. It's a very, very effective spot. Now, if we click the plus sign and we do the whole search thing and this pops up, we delete this, we type here like email, for example, it's going to have like email sign up forms, etc. But honestly, like most email marketing providers give you some type of specific HTML code that you can add to your site to add in your own specific forms. And so I don't suggest you doing that. I suggest just adding HTML. So first off, I'm going to be using ConvertKit for demo purposes. Uh, I personally use and recommend ConvertKit, but this is just a demo account I use. So anyways, let's just create a new form quickly and easily. I want to create a form right over here, and I want this to be an inline form because I want this to be in line with the content. And I want something that's really simple and will fit in and blend into the site. So I think Claire looks really nice where we just have the name, email address, subscribe, super simple. Love it. So let's click on choose. Okay, so here we go. That's our form right there. So obviously, with this not a convert kit tutorial, you can adjust this as you want, but I'll leave it as is. Now let me go ahead and click on embed. And now what I want is HTML. So let's go ahead and click on copy, right click, copy. Okay, now let's navigate back to our sites. Okay, so what do I want to do? I want to add in HTML. How do I do that? Again, plus sign is your best friend. All right. So let's go here to embed, okay? And so we come down here to embed. Now we have custom embeds, and then we want to embed a widget. Okay, so use HTML code to add widget. Yes, that's literally what we want. So it's like, yeah, click on that. All right, there we go. So now it's like, oh, that looks great. Big gray square. <laughs> you have to edit, enter the code. All right, here you go. Let's click on paste. Paste our code in. Let's click on update. All right, so let's X out of that. And there we go. Okay, so now we have our email form all set up. All right, so there we go. So now let's create, let's make it have its own little dedicated section at the bottom of the site. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to extend this down just a little bit. Let me move the blog post back up, make sure that's not clipping anything. And I think that looks, yeah, that looks great. Okay, so again, now we have our email opt in form there, but like I don't want this image there. So again, you have to click on plus. You have to go to Stripe, go to Classic, okay? And then just add in a different color, okay? And so let me change strip background. Let me go to settings. Let me change this from white to literally anything else, something that stands out. It could be green, blue, I don't, you know, whatever you want. So I'll pick this nice light green. There we go. Click X, click X, there we go. Now again, it's covering the form. So again, you have to right click, okay? Then you have to go to overlapping items, okay? And arrange. We want to move it backwards. There we go. Click on move backwards. Okay, hold on a second. That doesn't wait. <laughs> ah, there we are. <laughs> there we go. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> so the form was added below. Okay. So anyways, let's go ahead and center this. All right. So we got that. Let's move this up right there. All right. So there we go. Okay, good. So now we have an email opt-in form, but again, to go along with the form, you need to have a call to action, like why should people subscribe? So again, click on the plus sign, and then you have to go to text, okay? Then you wanna go to like maybe a title right there, or paragraphs, or something, like whatever, okay? So maybe we can add in a title, we can add in like a nice fun looking title right there. And so it's like, okay, subscribe, okay. So get our seven, subscribe, sub, Subscribe and get our seven seven day checklist checklist guide guide for ha zong whatever <laughs> okay just there we go we'll extend that out okay we could leave it right there and it's like okay maybe I can center the text alignment we'll have it be centered all right so maybe we can make the font size a little bit bigger okay maybe bold it. And see how that looks. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so center that there, have that there. All right, and then we click the bottom there. Okay, we can move it up just a little bit. There we go. So I think that looks really nice. So let's go ahead and click on preview. 
All right, so here's our website. So we got the call to action up top there. Image, boom, visual menu, video. Follow me on Instagram. Here's the latest blog post. Subscribe to our website. And there you go, okay? So now our homepage is functionally done. Looks fantastic. So now we need to adjust the footer and we also need to adjust the menu and the header at the top. So let's get to it. All right, so now it's time to adjust the footer of our website. So this is the footer section right there. It has the image that we have for our hero image up top there. Uh, obviously, we want to change it to something else. We want the, we don't want this image. So it's simple. So you just click on it, okay? Then you go here to change footer design. Literally that simple. So right now, the one that's selected is no color, which is transparent. So you can just come down here and select a different one that you like. So I'm going to click on this middle one right there. Let me go ahead and click on customize design. Okay, so we have this one there. I'm going to select this one so it's the full width right there. And then I'm gonna change this and make it white. Literally that simple. Or you can, whatever you want. You want gray, you want blue, you know, another shade of green, whatever. So uh, maybe, you know what? Maybe lighter green would blend in with the site. So actually I'll do that. Lighter green looks nice. Okay, click X, click X. There you go. Okay, so now if we go to preview, and it comes all the way to the bottom, okay? So you don't have to worry about it the way it looks when you're in the actual editor. So if you're like, oh no, there's spit, like don't worry about it. <laughs> it's going to reach, touch the bottom of the site. Now it's time to add things to our footer. So like, what do you add? Well, I can tell you what you add. Your footer is your area where you add your privacy policy, terms and conditions, you know, various links to other pages that maybe you don't wanna link into your main menu or up top there, you know, disclaimers, whatever, that sort of thing. So that's what we wanna add there. And to do so with Wix, again, is simple. Just plus sign. Just go to add text, okay? Don't don't overcomplicate this. You don't need to overcomplicate this. Really simple. So right here, we have big title, all caps, small title. And so, you know, you can go to paragraph if you want. So, for example, I would do a paragraph like this. And I'll move this down there. And then we have to say move to footer. There we go, okay? All I did was move to footer. And I would use like a piece of text like this as like uh, the disclaimer for say like Amazon Associates, like I'm a member of Amazon Associates, da 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 da, that sort of thing. So highlight this, I'll go here, I'll click on center so it looks good, okay? And so that would be like the disclaimer for the site. Now at the bottom there, maybe I want like some type of copyright. So, you know, again, click on plus, go text, maybe a title right there, maybe, you know, big title, all caps, small title, eh, that looks good. I'll do small title, you know, click it there, move to footer there we go okay so we'll just say copyright uh david and put, just put in my name there we go okay so maybe i'll make the font size really small in this one because it's just the copyright it's at the very very bottom of the site maybe something like literally like a seven or an eight maybe that's too small 14 okay that looks all right we'll take that i'll move that right to the bottom there we can kind of center this as appropriate maybe reduce that there we go. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So now we have like our disclaimer. We have like the copyright. You can add in the date, whatever you want to do. Okay. So again, like I always say, it's your site. You can do whatever you want. So, okay. So now we need a little bit more space for the footer right there. So let's just scroll down a little bit. Like move that down, move that down. Now, last, we can just add in our own little menu. So with Wix, again, just add text and then hyperlink the links to the specific page that you want to link to. It's really that simple. You don't need to overcomplicate it like, no, we make some menu in it. No, just go add text, okay? So add text. There we go. Right, there we go. <laughs> there we go. All right. And so let me come down there. We have the big title, small title. Eh, I'll do small title. Okay. And so we could do something like this. Like I could just have this be privacy, privacy policy. Okay. Maybe a separator and then terms of use. All right, so we'll extend that out like that. Okay, so that fits in appropriately. There we go. So I can come over here. I'll maybe I'll bold that. And there we go. So move that down, move to footer. There we go. And that looks good. Maybe it's a little big. So, you know, maybe instead of 23, there we go. Maybe just a tiny little bit smaller. Put that right at the top there. We could do something like that. And there you go. So now you need to manually create your own privacy policy and create your own terms of use pages, okay? So like that's, a, you know, I run an online business. So I have my own dedicated privacy policy and my own terms and conditions page. You gotta do the same. 
Now, when you have those pages ready, all you come down here is highlight it, okay? And then you come here to the link, click the link, and then web address or page. So you, then you can automatically link to a page that's already on your site. Or if you just want to do web address and then type in, you know, yourwebsite.com slash privacy, and then just add it in like that, you could do it that way. It's all totally up to you. And then just do that for the privacy policy in terms of views as a way to create uh, these links to your legalese pages. But anyways, that's how you adjust the footer with Wix. All right, so let's go ahead and add a menu to our header. So to get started is very easy. Again, just click on the plus sign right there, and then you wanna to navigate to over to where it says menu uh, as your item right there. Now over here, you have a bunch of different options that you can select for your menu. And just pick one that kind of blends into your site. You can always adjust the colors. For example, like this is green, like you can change it to like something else if you want. I'm personally gonna pick something kind of minimalistic. So I really like this one right there. Okay. So there we go. So we have two pages on our website. We have our menu right there. Now just drag and drop and boom, attach the header. It's that simple. So now you have successfully added a header, uh, a menu item to the header. Now all you have to do is like just adjust it, okay? So it's like, okay, that looks a little bit weird how wide that is. So we'll minimize this just a little bit. That looks a lot better. All right, so let me go and manage menu. Okay, so we have two items right there. So we have home and blog. Now, I'm not crazy about having a home link because people can click the logo to navigate back home, which we'll add next. So I'm just gonna go here and I'm gonna click on hide, okay? Because I don't want there, I just don't want, I don't like that. That's for my personal decision, <laughs> the way I design websites, I like keeping it simple. Okay, so now we have a blog post section right there and now we can just add pages. So let's go to add page. And you know, I'll call this, maybe we'll call this about, okay. And then we'll say done. And then I'll add another page. And you know, what else do we need? Okay, let's add in a contact page, okay? Contact page. We'll click on done. And then maybe one more, we'll say, instead of new page, we'll delete that. We'll say like resources, so we can engage maybe in like affiliate marketing a little bit, provide helpful resources to our readers. All right, so we'll click on done. Okay, and there we go, click on X. All right, and that looks good. So let me extend that out. Okay. okay, so I think that looks really nice. So what I wanna do though, is I kinda wanna make it transparent. I don't wanna have a white background. So again, we have to click on the item and then over here, we go to design, okay? Click on design. And now you wanna go to customize design. There we go. And so we have the menu, and then we have the opacity right there, 100% fill. We can just reduce that all the way down to zero. And there we go. So now we have a nice menu with a transparent background sitting right at the top of the website. I think that looks really nice. Now, again, you're like, oh, what happened to the site? Again, you have to pay attention to the page that you're editing, okay? So like right now we're on the resources page. I wanna navigate back to the home page, and this is what our website is looking like. So let's go ahead and click on preview. And I think that looks really nice with the menu up top there. So now the only thing that's kind of missing so far is a nice logo. So let's go ahead and add a logo to our website. Now let's add a logo to our website. So I just want to briefly mention that Wix does have a dedicated logo maker page that you can take advantage of, but we're not going to be using this service. We're just going to be using the standard old text editor features that come with our Wix website builder. So the first thing I want to add in is some type of like icon for our logo up top there. So let's go ahead and click on the plus sign. Now you want to find out like something where it says logo. So again, like always, make sure to use the search function up top there if you ever have problem finding something specific. So if I type in like logo, for example, it's going to help me out. It's going to get like vector logos and just, you know, oh, look at that decorative in there. There we go. Okay. So Wix is really helpful because the search function is great. It's easy to navigate to find stuff. So under decorative, there we go, logos and badges. All right, so that looks good. And now I'm gonna come down there and I'm gonna click on more logos and badges. Okay, and so we have vector art right there, logos and badges, and then we have a nice selection of different things that we can take advantage of. And so just pick something that makes sense for your website that you think looks nice. So I'm gonna pick these abstract triangles right here. I'll click on add to page and there we go. Let me move that over there. I wanna move that way over to the right because it's the logo, so I want it to have its own little space. Let's reduce the size so it's not too big and weird looking. And there we go. Okay, so now the thing that I wanna add next is text. Okay, so click on plus and then navigate back to text. 
and then titles. Yeah, that looks good. So pick a title, okay? And so I'll come down there. That title looks great. And I'll just call this, I don't know, adventure, okay? Obviously, you want to name it the site title. Whatever your website's called, that's what you want to call it. But I'll just call this adventure. There we go. Okay, so I'll move that over there. Now it's a little bit big, so it's extended out. So it fits a little bit better. And now let's move that over there. Definitely needs to be adjusted in terms of the size. Maybe maybe a size of like 8, 15 actually. That looks really nice. All right, so this is way too wide. I'll just reduce that little box right there. And I'll move that right over there. Okay, so let's go ahead and preview the site. And that looks really nice. So now we have a nice little simple logo right there. Now the issue though is because we don't have a home link, this needs to link to the home page. So how do you do that? You have to manually set that to link to the home page. So just, again, just click here. And then you want to click on edit text. And then you want to come down here where it says link, click the link, web address. And then you want this to be the home page of your website. So whatever your home page is, let me take caps off example.com. Okay. And then just not new window. You want to have it be open in current window and click done. And that way, when people are on the site, they can navigate via the menu bar up top there. Let me just center that. There we go. Okay. They can navigate the site via the menu bar up top there. We actually reduce that. There we go. And they can just click the logo to navigate back to the homepage. And so that makes your site very easy to use for the end user. Anyways, that's how you add a logo to your website. Okay, so now let's go ahead and adjust our additional pages. So we have the about contact resource pages. And so the process is exactly the same for what we did on the homepage. And so just take what you've already learned and apply it to your about contact and resources page. So to navigate to these specific pages, again, you have to come up top there, select from the drop down, then navigate to the page that you specifically want. Okay, let me go ahead and delete that. Now this is the about page. We have our header and we have our footer, but now we have to add in content. So again, like always, go to plus, go to strip, and then go to classic, and then click on an element right there, and there you go. So now you have a nice blank canvas to add text and images to, to explain like what the website is about. You can add in a photo gallery, completely up to you. You know, just have fun with this and, and just jump in here and add different specific items as you want. Now let's just navigate to the contact page. Now the contact page should have a contact form and that's really easy to do with Wix. So you come here, click the plus sign, then you come down here, contact and forms. Then you have a bunch of different contact forms. I personally would pick it, pick something that's simple. Okay. Oh, just keep it simple. Okay. You don't want to overwhelm people like this one looks great. Like that looks great. Looks awesome. Okay. And so now we can have like a nice little contact form right there. And then we can come in here, you can edit the text. And so like what I specifically would recommend doing is like heading five, uh, you could extend that down and just, you know, create and write one quick sentence like, Hey, thanks for your, thanks for your interest in the website. Click here, you know, follow us on Instagram, reply to emails within 24 to 48 hours. Just give people a little bit of context about what to expect and just something like that. That's literally, and I would just leave it at that. I would literally keep it that simple. Okay. Now, if we click the form itself and we come here to form settings, now here is where you can adjust the form settings, obviously. <laughs> okay, so uh, we come up over here, we come here to settings, email notifications, and this is the email that you signed up to Wix for. That's where the emails that people felt the form will be getting. But you can add in a new contributor, a new email if you want right there. You know, submit message, what do people get? So for example, if people submit a message, what do you want them to happen next? You just want a message to pop up like that where it says, thanks for submitting, or do you want them to be automatically redirected to like an external URL or a different URL, like a thank you. Hey, thanks for, thanks for sending your message in. We'll get right back to you. Whatever you can have the, you have all these like little details right here, which is really helpful. And so again, payment, obviously payment is for payment conditions, contacts, et cetera. And so you can even engage in email marketing with a basic, but again, this is your basic contact form and your email marketing automations. Personally, like I, you know, installed convert kit on the homepage. So I would be using convert kit for that completely up to you what you want to do. Again, I would just keep it simple with the contact page. Okay. Now we have our resource page, resource page. The best use of a resource page is to just link to helpful resources and just help people make a purchase decision. And so, you know, for example, like Nate O'Brien, here's his resource page. You can do this with Wix. <laughs> it's not that hard. Okay. So again, it's like 
to for me to like recreate that it's easy go to strip go to classic boom there we go extend this down it's like boom go here come up to the text then find paragraphs okay and then let me add this in right there okay there we go okay then boom let me add in a button right there okay then we come down there and then we'll say okay i'll add that button right there and drag it drop right there then it's like okay <laughs> follow along add an image okay so you have a lot of functionality and flexibility with how you want to design things with Blix. so it's really simple and so a resource page again this is where your, your spots engage in affiliate marketing but again you should make it helpful okay like help you should try and help people make a purchase decision about what to do so for example like i have a dedicated resource page but my resource page is about like what do i use what do i personally use to run and design my business so it's like i talk about web hosting how to make a decision domain names themes email marketing digital products youtube uh etc and then i have a whole decade page about best blogging tools you know and it's just done in a way to provide value and make it really helpful for people and like look really simple text okay you don't need to get fancy and so that's kind of like how i would approach the resource page here and so that's it okay so that's how i would go about adjusting your specific pages on your site like resources contact about and your future privacy in terms of use pages again i would just make it very simple and just add in text now it's time to get started blogging with wix and i have to say wix is pretty good now so anyways to get started with blogging you have to go here and we want to navigate to our dedicated blog page in our menu okay so now this is your spot to kind of adjust how you want this page to specifically look so if i click over here you have a couple of different things you can extend this out all the way if you want this to be full width totally up to you i personally kind of like the way that this looks and so let me come here to settings and here you can kind of change the way everything kind of looks and feels on the site so i'll click on the display let's just wait that load there we go display okay so again i want to decide the publish dates maybe uh you know more actions description excerpt view counter we don't count like there we go okay so let's go here to the layout and so here i can kind of click on like one column design see how that looks so I like the way that that kind of looks, spacing between the posts. And so you have a lot of little, like, little details about how you want to adjust this. You know, if I want this tilted, I want this to be editorial like this, or side by side. I personally kind of like the way that this one looks the most. So I'm just going to leave it as is like this, okay? And so I really like this. So if I come over here to preview, and then people can kind of view the latest blog post. We have kind of the image in the background. I, I think that looks really nice. Now, the only thing I would add to this is maybe like let people know where they are, like uh, blog, like literally just have a title on this page blog, because that's what the name of this page is. So just give it a title. So just click that, drag that, drag that down a little bit, click that plus sign, go up here to text, go up here to titles, you know, or theme text, whatever it is you want. I'm going to just go theme text heading H1 because we are adding a title. Okay. And I'll just call this blog literally blog and i'll make that bold and keep it like that okay and now just again you just want to make sure it's centered on the page and there we go and we'll just drag that up a little bit and now you the end user knows exactly where they are and the page has an h1 tag so it helps search engines and just you know gives nice structure to the site everyone knows where they're at so let me go ahead and click on preview all right, so, you know, okay, so what's wrong with this? Eh, that's a little bit too much space up top there. So again, you know, you just got to jump back and forth. Let me move that up a little bit, move that up a little bit, and just take a look at it. Okay, does that look good? Mm, no, move it up right there. Okay, and I think that looks good. Okay, and there you go. So now we have our blog post page set up. Okay, and so you have a couple different options there. Again, like strategy and settings. Uh, we come over here to settings. So now we we can change different things like uh design for example blog menu video settings support you know just you can just jump into each of these details a little bit more but in general that's all you kind of need to know to set up a blog post page because you just want people to click on the blog link then <laughs> have your blog post open up and i think this looks great now how do you create a blog like how do you write a blog post what do you do with wix well with wix you have to log into your website like this each and every time uh not a big deal but then you have to go here to manage posts you want to click on that once you click on that then you have your opportunity to 
delete these old generic blog posts that kind of came with the installation. So you can come here, you know, and just go here to click the little dots and then move to trash, whatever. So I definitely would recommend <laughs> deleting these. Uh, but again, uh, you know, you, it's just for demo content, just to help you get set up so you kind of understand the, the look and feel of your website. So, you know, when you're ready, just go ahead and delete these. And then you want to come up here to create a new post. All right. So now this is the blog post section of your website with Wix. Let me just go ahead and open up Website Creative Pro so we can follow along with this. I think I'll open up this one right there. Uh, we'll create blogging versus YouTube. All right. There we go. So add a catchy title. What does that mean? So for example, like this going after the keyword phrase blogging versus YouTube, because it's something people are looking for. Then which one makes more money? Okay, so that's making it a catchy title. You don't want to just have the keyword. Okay, you want to have the keyword and then have a little bit more to make it a little bit more interesting for users so they actually like click on your content and read your post. All right, so right here is where you can just start writing content. So we'll just take this and we'll just boom. Okay, so I can just paste that in there. So that's it. Okay, so you just start writing blog post. It's very simple. Now, what you really need to pay attention to is make sure to break up the blog post as appropriate, like this is an H2 tag. Okay, so let me take that and I'll take that right here. So this is an H2. So how did I do that? How did I make that with uh, Wix? So you click on the plus sign, or sorry, you just, okay, let me just type it in actually. YouTube first, actually, we'll just copy and paste that in again. All right, so it's automatically picking up that this is the title. Anyways, highlight it. There you go, <laughs> right there. So H2, H3, if I want to change that to a paragraph. Now with Wix, you only have H2 and H3. Uh, with WordPress, you have access to H3, H4, H5. Little excessive in general, you're going to use like H1 and 2. So this is like the title. So this is your H1 title tag, paragraph H2. That's all you really need to do, okay? And so you just publish to write content, just publish content, break things up, like use bullet points. Not, it's not hard. <laughs> it's, you know, and so like get started writing a new section, make sure to change it to the paragraph. Okay. And then down here, as you're writing, you have a bunch of different options. So I can highlight this and I'd say, I want to make that into bullet points and there we go. So now bullet points there. It's really, you know, it's very, very intuitive, uh, experience. Now, right down here is where you can kind of add in multimedia. You can add in an image you want. So just click on that. Then the media, the media uploads. Okay. So these are the pictures that I've already uploaded to my account. It's really that simple. And then you have your video there. You have add gallery, add a divider. Okay. Insert HTML, uh, add a GIF if you want really simple stuff. So, you know, you can come here to like, you know, I can add in a divider like that, help break up the piece of content a little bit. Uh, click the plus sign, say if I want to maybe add a video. And so it's like I can add in a YouTube video right there, or I can upload a video from my computer if I want. Again, depends on your plan with Wix. You are limited depending on your account. Like, so, you know, but it's not, you're not limited with YouTube. You're embedding the YouTube video. YouTube is hosted on a different server. This is means like upload a video to your server on Wix. And so I would only do that if it was some type of like sales video and I want it to just only be exclusive to my website. That's kind of like what I would do. That's really it. It's really that simple. And so we come over here to SEO. Now SEO really good because you have the control over the meta description, title tags, the URL. So again, just pay attention to the title, the way it looks. Okay. URL slug right down there. So it's like slash your website slash then the site title right there. It's really nice and simple. Let me X out of that. So again, come down there and then we have the SEO title, SEO title. What does that mean? All right, let me just type in website, website, creative pro. There we go. All right. So for example, like this is the site title. Okay. So when it says like SEO title right there, it means this title that will appear in the search engines. Okay. And so SEO description right down there, this is the SEO description. And so that's what you want to add there. And you have to do that for each individual piece of content. You know, you have to do this for every single blog post. And so for the SEO description, you want to incorporate your keywords uh, lightly. You don't want to make it spammy or weird. That's it. Okay. And that's all you really have to pay attention to SEO title. Make sure it's good. Make sure it like matches this, you know, for example, like blogging versus YouTube, which one makes more money Then the page title right up top there is blogging versus YouTube, which one makes more money. You know, you don't have to match it, not always, but just, you know, you, you want to make sure your keywords in the title, the SEO title and the title on the page. 
Okay, and that's it. And then the URL slug, URL slug is this. So like, you just wanna make it something short and sweet. Not that important, but you don't want it to be like blogging first, YouTube, which one makes my blah, blah, blah. Like too much guys, too much. Like just shorten that, <laughs> shorten that down like I did right here. And that's it, okay? And so right over here, we have your social shares. And so again, like when people share your website, it's gonna, this is what can appear as you want. Then we have the advance over there, okay? Now let's navigate to categories. Now you have to organize everything within categories. So not rocket science, just make sure you have relevant categories for your website. So if I click on blog up top there, so at the top here on the blog page, we have specific uh, categories. Let me just load it up a little bit more. There we go. So now we have like content marketing, domain names, tutorials, etc. And so, you know, just make sure to add in like four to six categories as appropriate for your blog. And last, let's navigate back to settings. And right here we have display a cover image. And so what does that mean? That means like these images right here. So these are called feature images or display images. So if we take a look at our specific blog posts, uh, just disappeared. <laughs> oh, there it goes. Okay, so that's like the display image. Okay, so when you wanna associate an image with the blog post, that's how you do it there. So again, like we have to just uh, click on this. Let me go to manage posts. There we go. So we create a new post and then settings right there. And so that's the uh, image for the blog post that will appear on your website. And that's pretty much it. That's what you really need to pay attention to uh, with regards to your blog posts. All right, so now it's time to publish our website and upgrade our account. So to publish your website is obviously simple. Just click on the publish button. There you go, okay? And so now it's gonna say, congratulations, your website is live. Let's go ahead and click on view sites. And so right now your website is a subdomain of wixsite.com, which we don't want. We, have a, we want our own custom domain name. We also wanna get rid of any type of Wix ad like this because what this is, is just an ad. And it's an ad for people to sign up. So we come back here and then boom, okay? So we're back here, <laughs> we're back at the beginning. And so you have no choice, okay? If you wanna get rid of these ads, you want a custom domain name, you have to just you know level up your account. Like don't be cheap. It's like things like this cost money. So anyways, Wix is great because you're able to just to create and design your entire website, understand the process, and then when you're ready, you can upgrade. So anyways, let me back out of this. So now my site is effectively published. So I'm gonna go here and click on upgrade and let's upgrade and save. All right, so now right here, so we have different plans. So we have website plans and we have business and e-commerce plans. So we're going to be doing a website plan. Now you have a few different options. You have connect domain name, combo, unlimited. Honestly, the only one worth it is unlimited and VIP in my opinion, because the connect domain name allows you to have a custom domain name, but right down there, remove Wix ads, no. So you can have a custom domain name, but it's still gonna have that banner that says this site is built with Wix right at the top. Really ugly banner, like at least if it was in the footer, <laughs> you know, and said like this site is powered by Wix, ah, okay, I can live with that. But no, I can't live with that, that big banner and when I'm paying money to connect a domain name. Now the combo for personal use, I mean, remove Wix ads, okay, free SSL certificate, but that is so limp, the bandwidth right there, bandwidth two gigabytes, I mean, that's nothing. Like that's literally like 15 visitors a day. <laughs> like that's so small. Your only option really is to get started is to go with the unlimited plan. And so, you know, that's it, okay? So it's for entrepreneurs and freelancers. This is for, you know, people who are developing a proper website with Wix. They're gonna be blogging, creating content, etc. So this is the plan that you want. So go ahead and click on the select. All right, so now you have your option to uh, pay monthly, yearly, uh, whatever you want, okay? So the more you pay in advance, uh, the more that the more of a discount you get, okay? So it's, again, it's completely up to you. So I'm just gonna go here and click on monthly. Okay, so monthly subscriptions don't include free domain name for one year. That's okay, because we're going to get our domain name at Namecheap, Site Booster app, Visitor Analytics app, that's okay as well. So anyways, let me go ahead and click on continue to checkout. Okay, and here we go, and that's it, okay? So I'm not gonna insult your intelligence, it's just <laughs> submit payment. Fill everything out that you need to do, your credit card information, and that's it in order to upgrade your account. 
Okay, so once you submit payment, you're gonna be looking at this where it says, congratulations, your site is premium. Now, it gives you the option to find the best domain name for your site. So what this functionally does is it registers a domain name through Wix, and Wix is going to be your domain name registrar. Now, Wix is not bad. Uh, it costs about $15 per year after the first year, but I definitely suggest you use something like namecheap.com. This is my preferred domain name register of choice. They're an actual domain name register. This is where I keep all of my domain names and then I can move my domain name around to any service that I want. It's not stuck at any one spot. So totally up to you if you wanna use the search function right there and then add in a website, totally fine. Otherwise, I suggest using Namecheap. So anyways, I already have a domain name and I want to connect it. Okay, so now it says, what domain name do you want to connect to your site? So I'm going to type in this domain name that I have registered already, which is my name. There we go. Let's click on it next. Okay, so we found your domain name at Namecheap. Next, we'll give you instructions. Yes, it's from Namecheap. All right, so now it gives you instructions on how to update the name servers. So the name servers are just what point your domain name to your hosting account. And so your hosting account is actually Wix. Wix is a website builder and a web host. They're an all-in-one solution. So now we come down here, and then you just have to adjust the name servers, okay? So here are my name servers. So NS15 and NS14. Really that simple. So let's take NS15. We'll take that. We'll go into our domain name. Now, within Namecheap and all domain name registers like this, you just have to find a domain name. You want to navigate to like where it says your name servers right there. You want to change it from Namecheap Basic DNS to Custom DNS. And then name server one. Name server one is NS15. There we go. And now we come down here, NS14. Okay, highlight that. Oh, there we go. Let's take this. There we go. Right click, copy, and we'll put that in there. Paste. And there you go. And so now just click on the green check mark. And there you go. And so DNS server may take up to 40 hours to take effect. Personally, I've never seen it take 48 hours. It usually takes 20 to 20 minutes to maybe an hour, maybe an hour max. And so at this point, take a break. <laughs> okay, you've earned it. So that's it. So that's really all you have to do in order to you know connect your domain name at Namecheap or any domain name register, be it GoDaddy or whatever it is you're using to your Wix account. It's really that simple. Now make sure to verify your domain name connection, okay? So click the verify connection to check that your domain name settings were updated. Let's go ahead and click on it, verifying. It may not come back that it was correct because I just adjusted this. Again, that's why it says it takes like 48 hours, etc. cetera. Uh, we'll just wait that. Okay, we're checking in your domain. Yeah, it can take 40 hours. It's the same thing. Anyways, at this point, you just got to take a break. <laughs> just come back in half an hour and everything should be good to go. Name server update. So I just want to let you guys know that I did reach out to Wix support asking what's the best way to connect the domain name because setting the name servers at Namecheap to point to Wix is a very quick, easy way to connect the domain name to your website. But the issue comes with like getting an SSL certificate set up, et cetera, and having a secure website. And so I reached out to Wix support and they surprisingly told me that uh, I should set the name servers at Namecheap to the default Namecheap servers and then add an A record and a C name record. And so I don't know, understand why they have the onboarding process telling you to set it up uh, by name servers, but then they change it if you want to have a HTTPS secure connection, which you obviously do. So what you need to do is navigate back to your domain name. It should be basic, <laughs> Namecheap basic DNS. Then you want to click on the advanced tab over here. And then you just have to add in an A record and a C name record. So we come down there for your domain name, create an A record that points to this uh, IP address and C name record that points to www.231wixdns. You just input that there. And literally that's it. That's all you got to do. And then wait, and then everything should propagate as appropriate. Now, again, if you just want to avoid all of this, this is why you can register a domain name directly through Wix and everything will be set up without you having to do any of this. Again, it's not too technical, but again, like Namecheap has better prices. And I personally just use domain uh, Namecheap for all my domain name registration needs. 
So it's totally up to you which way you want to go. Both have their pros and cons. But anyways, I just want to create this quick update on how to set up name servers and get a secure website with Wix. Welcome back. So after you've waited probably I'd say half an hour, it should have propagated properly right here. So you should be able to see your domain name for your website within your Wix dashboard. Now, one thing I want you to make sure is that it's HTTPS, okay? So when I did it, it was HTTP. You get a free SSL certificate for your website, so you just need to enable it. Now, what an SSL certificate is, it just gives that little lock icon right over here, okay? And so that's why uh, getting your site secure is important. Now, what I had to do is I just had to use the Wix support conversations and just use their uh, you know, contact chat bot. And so I just said, it's SSL I'm having an issue with, boom, this is the website, boom, yes, secure my website, and then that's it, okay? And it's like, okay, HTTPS is now enabled for the site, hope that resolves the issue. There you go, so it literally took a minute, it wasn't hard at all. Now, if you go to view live site, you may see this where it says, oh, the site can't provide a secure, you have to wait, <laughs> okay? Just wait, all right? Things take a little bit of time to propagate with domain names and name servers and SSL certificates. This stuff is not instantaneous, okay? So just be a little patient. Now, one thing since we're in our dashboard that we can do is we can navigate to settings and we can change the favicon. So the favicon is this little icon for our website. It's really important to change it to something custom. It helps brand your website. It's just hygiene where it's like your website looks like it's missing something without it. Uh, when people are on their mobile device and visit your website, this pops up uh, when they save it, etc. Really just simple little things. So again, settings, website settings. Here we go. Here you can change the site name. Here you can change your site address if you want. And then here we can upload a favicon. And so let me go ahead and do that. All you have to do is click on upload image and then drag and drop an image into place. Make sure it's a smaller image, okay? So let me open with this, I'll just show you. So this is currently a 100 by 100 pixel image, you know, whatever, okay? Just create whatever you want. Just create some type of small image, drag and drop it into place. And there we go. And so here you can crop and edit, you can adjust, etc. And so let me go ahead and click on choose file. And now we've added a favicon, okay? So it looks okay. Obviously I'd have to play around with it a little bit more, but you know, whatever, that's how you add a favicon. Uh, and it's really that simple. And so, and so then when you're ready, just go ahead and click on save after you're happy with the way your favicon looks. And that's it. SEO for your website. So I touched on SEO with regards to your blog posts and your blog page about how to structure content. But now I want to kind of broadly speaking, look at the SEO for your entire website. So let's get started. Navigate to the bottom of the page here when you're in your dashboard and you want to click on SEO tools. All right. So now we have this get found SEO patterns, verification manager sitemaps. All right. So what the heck is going on over here? Oh, and robots text. <laughs> okay. So what's going on here? All right. So get found on Google. This is kind of like Wix's hand holding feature where they kind of walk you through everything. We're not going to do this because you got me telling you what to do. So we're not going to just going to ignore this. Uh, Site verification, this is important because when you sign up to other websites where you need to verify ownership of your website, they're gonna give you specific code. The site verification is where you can verify that. For example, if you wanna sign up to Google Search Console, you're gonna to need to verify that you own your website. And so that's where you go here. So you go into site verification, take the code that you get from Search Console, boom, put it over here. Now, redirect manager, this is really helpful because as you create content over time, you're gonna find that like, oh, this blog post and this blog post are kind of similar. Maybe I can combine these two pieces of content into one and redirect from one to the other, that sort of thing. So like if you have a blog post and you wanna combine it with another blog post into one, you're gonna to have to end up like moving the, the indexation and the traffic that that one post is getting into the other post. So that's where you go here to set up different redirects from one URL on your website to a different URL. Let me back out of that. Okay, so it's really that simple. Now, over here, sitemaps. This is really important because once you sign in to Google Search Console, you can submit your sitemap to Google and it helps index your website a little bit more quickly. And this is like just where you can find your sitemap. Robots Text Editor. Again, most people don't really need to touch this, but the Robots Text file, it's kind of like where you add in uh, specific ways you want your website crawled and indexed, etc. Uh, a little bit more advanced for this tutorial, so just leave it there. You don't really need to do too much with that. Okay, 
Now over here, SEO patterns, this is actually quite important because you can set up the way your site is structured for uh, blog posts and pages. So if we come over here to the edit pattern for pages, then we come here to edit. What we see here is the page name and the site name. And in general, that's what we want. Okay. In general, that's what you're going to want. You're going to want like about page separator and then the name of the website. So I would just leave that as is. Now with blog posts, you have the same thing. Click here, edit. You have your post title. So you can have post title. What I would also consider doing is just add in the site name of the website. So we can come down there, site name, boom. Now you don't have to do this. You can manually type it in, but I personally would just leave it like that. Let me go ahead and click on save. And there you go. Okay. And so that's really all you have to do for this section right there with adjusting these. Okay. Anyways, let's jump into our editor. Now, where do you adjust the SEO for your specific pages? Very simple. We come here to menus and pages. Now you come here to the dots, go there, then click on the SEO. This is where you can adjust things as appropriate. And so right down there, what you want to have it is like for the site title, this is your homepage. So the name of the website comes first and then a keyword description of the website. Okay. So, so name of website, page separator, keyword description of website. That's it. Then write a quick little paragraph that describes the website. So if you take a look at websitecreatepro.com, website create pro that comes first, then keyword description of the website, then meta description. Okay. Literally that simple. Now, if I click on this piece of content right there, where we have best WordPress plugins, and we take a look at the way that this is structured. If I navigate up top there, look at the way it's structured, the best, most useful plugins for WordPress bloggers. Okay. So it's the name of the post first, then the site title. Let me open up the about page. I'll show you that. And so the about page, look about page separator, name of website. That's the kind of structure that you want to have uh, for your specific pages. So your homepage name of the website comes first, then the keyword description. So for example, if we come here to about, I'll click on Google SEO. You want to make sure that it's about me or whatever you want to phrase it. And then the name of your website. And just do that for each one of your pages. It's really that simple. And then for your blog posts, as we already went into the pattern for your blog posts, your blog posts are going to be the post title, page separator, and then the site and then the site name. So, you know, we can come over here, maybe put in there. Let me put the site title, page separator there. There we go. And that's it. So every time you write a publish a piece of content on your website, you're gonna have the post title, page separator, site name. Really that simple. And again, you can customize this as you're creating content as you want. It's not like a, it's in, carved into stone. You have no flexibility. You can do whatever you want. Okay. And then make sure to also navigate over to advanced SEO. And so you have the site name. I definitely would change this from like the default where like what you had it when it was under the free plan from site two to something that's a little bit more like descriptive of what the site is about. Like for example, this is a high Zong blog or travel blog or whatever. That sort of thing. That's all you want to adjust there as appropriate. And that's really all you need to pay attention to with regards to SEO. Optimizing your website for mobile. So to finish off this tutorial, I just want to briefly mention that within Wix, you can switch to mobile view right here by clicking the little phone icon. There we go. Now, what you need to do is to make sure your website looks good on a mobile device. It's really important and it's very simple to adjust. Okay. So now this is the dedicated editor. So like, let me move this. So, so that looks bad. So I got to like make that let me adjust there. I think that looks nice. Okay. Let me like move the logo over there. Move that we'll move the menu item up top there. All right. So let me kind of move this down because I want the image to be big when people like view the site on a mobile device. Boom. <laughs> change that there as appropriate. Okay. And then like, I'll move that over here and you know, we can make that a little bit, maybe, I, maybe I can make that a little bit bigger. So wait, <laughs> so make sure you don't click on anything and there we go. So I can change the font size there. Okay. I'll make it more big and impressive. There we go. Okay. And then there we go. Move this again, move this down and give it a little bit more space. There you go. And so just scroll through your website and then just eyeball and be like, does this look nice? Does this thing need adjustment? And that's really it. Okay. And it's really that simple when you want to go and adjust. So for example, like, Oh, that looks bad. Let me just, let me just extend this out. Okay. So it's like, ah, let me fix that. So it doesn't have that weird like bar right there. 
Ah, there we go. Much better. And then just eyeball it. Just take a look at it. Oh, the copyright's in the wrong spot. It should be centered right there. Let me take a look at over here. Put that right there. And that's it. Okay, so just pay attention to how your pages are looking because you will have to adjust everything. Now, mind you, as you change things here, you're just changing on a mobile device. So, for example, if I switch over here back to the desktop, everything's in the same spot. Okay, every, nothing's moved, nothing's changed. If I click over here to mobile, I've customized the design for mobile. Let me skip this step. <laughs> okay, so it's really important just to pay attention to that. It's really easy. Uh, I definitely, again, recommend just design your website on a desktop like this, on your laptop, boom, get it done. Then jump in and pay attention to how everything is looking, okay? So that looks good, the logo there, the menu, the hamburger menu there, and just and then just jump between pieces of content. So, it's, okay, let's take a look at the blog. How's the blog looking? And so it's like, ah, okay. So the blog could be like, that would be a little bit better if that was centered right there. Okay, so that looks really nice the way that that's laid out. You know, and just play around with it and adjust everything as appropriate. And so, you know, you just want to make sure that your website's optimized for mobile and everything looks good. Nothing's out of place. Nothing looks a little bit weird. And then when you're happy with everything, again, just go ahead and click on publish and that's it. All right, everyone, that's it for this tutorial video on how to create a professional website and blog using Wix. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing and hit that like button. My name is David, WebsiteCreativePro.com. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day. Bye-bye.